So what we have on, on display here, I've got uh, seven nodes of, a, of the royalty ledger up and running. And I'll sort of explain to you what we've got laid out. I've got uh, four um, trading partners. So I've got NAL represented up here as a oil and gas producer. I've got a royalty, an anonymous royalty co represented down below. In the middle here, I've got the regulator. So we're representing a node that the Alberta Energy Regulator would, would uh, host. I've got the bank involved and I've got the pricing oracle. And this is what James referred to as how do you inject facts into a distributed ledger for the purposes of settlement or calculation in this case. And then on the far screen, we've got Prairie Sky as another royalty aggregator and another producer. So I've got four parties sort of in the mix. Now, we also are representing uh, a concept of what we're calling on-ledger cash. So in order to um, settle a contract on the ledger, uh, there's, it's one thing to create a payable and a receivable, but then how do I actually um, eliminate those or retire those with, with a payment? So we, we're using an on-ledger cash representation, which is totally analogous to um, PayPal. So if you want to buy something on PayPal, you're going to have to fund your PayPal account just give me some license there because yeah, okay, so you can have it dip your bank account or your credit card, but the way it used to work was I had to fund my account on PayPal with my money and then I could spend it online. So this is very similar analogy in that I've got an on-ledger balance that's been issued by the bank because I've put money on deposit with the bank to back the treasury of the ledger. So I'm gonna, that, that's what I'll demonstrate first, is I'm gonna issue some cash which represents maybe the producer, I'll do it with NAL, putting some more cash on deposit on the ledger. So if I'm, at, I'm ATB, NAL's put some cash on deposit, so I'm going to issue currency into their wallet so that they now have on ledger cash to spend. So give them a thousand dollars. I like this part, I can just print money. <laughs> I wish I could do this with my own account. And what you'll see here is it's been, the cash has been created on the ledger and transferred to NAL, and if you were quick, you saw their cash balance rise from 9,600 to 10,600. So that's a, um, a funding transaction, uh, and it is arguably could be considered a unique smart contract. Corda provides um, the default and sort of low level uh, uh, currency and fungible asset models that we need to be able to do that. And so now we're getting into the part of the actual contract proposal between parties that we want to execute on a monthly basis. How so is that first contract verified? Like, who does the... Who does the mining? Yeah. Okay, so there is no mining. In a permissioned ledger, it's, there's no consensus algorithm apart from the business network operator. And the way Corda works is that there's a no, what the concept of a notary. Okay. So there is a node on the network, which you don't see here, which is it's because there's no interface on it. Okay. Um, that actually notarizes all the transactions. And that notary... That is the idea of the centralized ledger. Well, so they don't keep a copy of the transactions. They make sure, just like on a Bitcoin blockchain or, or Ethereum blockchain, that there's no double spend. They guarantee the sequence of transactions okay. and they guarantee there's no double spend. And so that's mandatory in any blockchain implementation because you can't have somebody spend the same asset right. more than once. So that's what that, and so in production, we expect that we will have a fault tolerant cluster, notary cluster, that will represent that function. And it's yet to be determined whether that'll be hosted by the regulator. Maybe it's hosted, like actually each party to the network could actually host their own notary node and all notaries would be required to sign the transactions. That's an, that's an opportunity that we have. Yep, that's still design phase. The default is you have to have a notary to sign those transactions. Okay, perfect. And right now the notary is controlled by, in this one it was controlled by... Guild? Us, yeah, Guild, Guild One. Okay. We're, we're running the notary okay, node. Okay, yeah. okay. So uh, now we're getting into the, the uh, circumstances where the operator or producer wants to drill a well. So they've, they've negotiated the land and have negotiated a royalty right and, uh, and now we're going to put it on the, on the ledger. So the, we're identifying an asset. We fully expect that this will be an asset hierarchy when we go to production because these contracts can be written at a, at a uh, high level, meaning that they can be written for a parcel of land, not necessarily an actual well itself. So we've, for ease of demonstration, and this is where the calculations all get made today, 
is that we, we have to actually do them at the well level, and even then, even further granular than that, we have to do them at the producing interval level. So on any given well, you might have multiple royalty contracts all the way up the well bore uh, in all the producing intervals that, uh, that aggregate or accrete to the actual surface lease that you're exploring on. So I'm going to pick uh, my favorite, which is A to 33, which is the one we used for the transaction that was announced this morning. I'm going to backdate my contract to start February 1st. This is a 70% allocation. And that means that 70% of the production from this well is used is actually um, is used for the royalty calculation. 30% is not subject to any royalty. 70% is. NAL is the producing party. They've got a 95% stake, and in this case, Prairie Sky is the royalty holder, and they've got what's called a 5% gross overriding royalty. Now, it's a very uh, simple calculation and that's why we used it in this proof of concept in that it's really just the allocation times the production volume times the percentage of the royalty times the price straight, straight linear algebra and we can we can compute a value so when i offer that contract we will see the transaction start to replicate across the distributed ledger so nal has a version here we now have i've offered the contract so it's immediately approved by me i've signed it with my cryptographic keys and you'll notice this royalty code didn't get a copy uh, that is the unique position of, of the underlying distributed ledger platform that we use for Corda because it um, provides us not, uh, an ability to not share data with parties that are not party to the to the actual transaction it's not like a normal blockchain where all the data goes to all the nodes it respects the privacy and the confidentiality of the stakeholders involved so Prairie Sky got a copy because they're party to the contract. The bank didn't get a copy. The, the regulator didn't get a copy. The Oracle doesn't know what's going on. But Prairie Sky, as the royalty holder who was offered the contract, definitely got a copy. Now, they have the ability to do a few things. And we've implemented a bi-directional, we've implemented a bi-directional um, transaction model here where they can actually negotiate those contract terms on the ledger should they choose. I can either reject it outright and say, no, not happy with any of it, don't want to do business with you. Or I can return the message saying, thanks for the offer, but I actually um, think the terms are wrong, there's something else I need to see there. For the purpose of this well, I happen to know that those terms are exactly correct. And so I, I'm just going to hit approve on Prairie Sky's behalf. Status of the transaction now shows that both parties have approved the contract, and NAL shows that they've approved the contract. Again, nobody else is sharing in, in the information. So now the contract's in place. We go and drill the well, and a few months later, we're now going to start producing product out of that well. And this is where things start to get interesting now, because I've got a... Uh, oil well that I'm going to bring on production and the transaction that we we did for real last week was for December's production price and volume and the cash movement between NAL and Prairie Sky. So on this particular well I'm going to say I'm going to issue the production report and you're going to see a few things happen here. The AER as the regulator has only seen one one report of production in the demo right now and there's no price has been issued as part of these transactions. So I'm going to go ahead and issue the production for this well for December. Oh, sorry. And I know that that volume is 27 cubic meters. I'm going to hit OK. That's right. These guys have done their production accounting. So they've done their, they've accounting, done their marking. That yes, that's right. And then it hits the chain. Correct. Okay. That's exactly right. So interestingly, what they also have to do today is that they do that production accounting. They do the marketing. They send out the messages to all of the stakeholders. They write the checks. They report the production to the board. They, you know, they, there's a whole bunch of redundant effort that has to go into it. Really, I'm a real student of a single source of truth and. 
that's the single source of truth. I just issued the production, why isn't the board listening to what's going on, right? So they can, this almost replaces the S reporting concept that exists right. today. It, it, we don't need Some to report it. Yeah, that's the measurement piece, yeah. So what we've seen happen is um, the production's been reported. The pricing oracle has showed that they've issued a price for that month for that product. And I've got a little green dot up here, which means I've got a message on my payable screen. NAL is showing a payable to Prairie Sky in, in terms of 403.51. That's what they're, the amount owing. And if I walk over here and show you the Prairie Sky, the, they have a receivable. And this is the beauty of the distributed ledger is it's really, even though there's two different nodes on the network, I've got one representation of a transaction. Both parties see exactly the same thing, 403 owing, 403, um, re being, 403 being received, 403 owing, right? Bank doesn't know what's going on. They're not party to any of these transactions yet. So next transaction is NAL, and this is the artificial uh, manual process that we put in place to uh, allow some time to, to talk about what's going on. Um, but normally this would flow. I don't need to double check that the amount's been calculated properly because I've tested the smart contract code. I know that it's doing the math correctly. So I'm, we just put the settlement button in here so that we could pause. Right, so it would have automatically. Yeah, it would have just automatically okay. settled and cleared and retired the payable and the receivable. I'm going to do that manually. And you're going to see a couple things happen. Now it's, it's, yeah, it's showed paid. No, not yet. Um, Prairie Sky showed paid. My cash balance has gone down by $403. Prairie Sky's cash balance has gone up by $403. Okay. So this is still on the ledger, not, re not outside the ledger balance. So the funding account, the, the financial backing of the treasury of the ledger is still managed by ATB. We've got $21,000 in circulation. It's kind of uh, very analogous to the Canadian Mint. You know, they print the dollars and issue, it, issue the currency, and they know exactly what's in circulation, but they don't know who has it. When you go to the bank and withdraw cash, give it to your uh, husband or wife to spend on groceries, the bank doesn't know who's holding the cash, right? Until they see it on deposit. So the last transaction that we demonstrate is, well, how do I get my on-ledger position in Canadian dollars fiat currency so I can actually pay salaries and rent for, for my company? And that, that transaction would be, I need to periodically redeem my cash balance for real Canadian dollars in my bank account. And I'm going to do that now. And ultimately, we will see the transfer back to the bank and an exit. And now you'll see that my cash balance has been reduced to zero, so I don't have any more on ledger cash. And what ATB has done is the cash on ledger total has actually reduced by 403 as well, because they've actually moved it out of the ledger environment entirely and sent an EFT to Prairie Skies bank account at Toronto Dominion.